All right. I hope everybody's had a chance to come on, and I hope you can see my Go Big Orange UT is third in the nation shirt that I wore tonight just for this occasion. And welcome, everyone, on behalf of the Tennessee Fire Chiefs Association and the International Association of Fire Chiefs. We're excited about this third in our series of training on leadership training and especially on recruitment and retention in the volunteer fire service and the combination fire service. And again, thank you guys for being here. It, uh, as I told you last week, it, it proves uh, that you are dedicated to the Tennessee Fire Service and you're dedicated to your departments to spend your time coming on here getting this quality training. And we're just excited about tonight because we're really getting into uh, heavily into recruitment. Uh, Jan's going to be talking to us about using sales and questioning techniques to inspire people to want to be part of your organization. So we're excited about this. So I want to introduce for you that it might be new to the call, introduce Jan to you, Jan Spence. She is uh, just a really neat person. She loves people. She loves motivating people. She wants to motivate us to reach our full potential as she says, to fulfill our God-given mission here on earth. And that is so important. But she has worked with uh, the International Fire Chiefs, which is what we're doing tonight. She's done this in the past very successfully. She's also worked with little uh, small neighborhood uh, stores like Walmart, Pillsbury, Frito-Lay. So, you know, she does know what she's doing. We're excited about having her on. She's even, don't make her mad because she's played professional full tackle women's football. So with all that being said, I want to turn it over to Jan and I want to encourage you guys that are on here to uh, uh, come on and let us see your face and participate. Uh, I, was, I told Jan some of them won't come on here because they've got active warrants, but we want you to we want you to come on and we also uh, want you to remember to stay muted unless you do need to talk, but it is interactive. We, we want to hear from you, but but keep yourself muted until time to talk. In case you get calls or anything else. Also, email me or uh, text me how many, I know some of you guys are watching individually and some of you are watching in groups at your fire station or other places. So, you know, let me know how many people you have all together. We had 81 people last week attending. So that is phenomenal for a digital meeting like this. It really is. So we're excited. Tennessee again leads the way and thank you guys so much for what you're doing. So I'm gonna shut up and turn it over to Jan. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate it. So I'm asking you, do you all remember, what did you want to be when you grew up? So many of us, it was a nurse or a ninja, maybe a doctor or a dog walker. Maybe it was even that baseball player or a princess. For some of you, it might even been the solid gold dancer, depending on what, what generation you're from. We all had a dream as we were growing up. So pop into the chat. Tell me what was it when you were a little kid, six or seven years old, what was it that you wanted to be when you grew up? So I'm going to I'm going to put my answer there in the chat. I'm going to ask everyone just to find that chat button down there at the bottom of your screen where it says chat and type in what was it that you wanted to be? A rock star, yes, woo, 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 I got three, bro, there we go, rock star. I wanted to be a ballerina, that was my thing. I wanted to be a ballerina or an actress, something on stage, surprise, I'm a speaker on stage now. So let me see what some other folks wanted to be. What was your dream? What did you dress up for Halloween? Chief, yes, a firefighter, not unusual. I love it, Billy, yep, a pilot, excellent. So what are where are my where are my football players, my baseball players, my basketball players in the house? Cindy, what did you want to be? And again, if you're with a group, uh, I know that many of you zoom in with us and we love that. And you've got the whole department there or most of the department or your leadership team. Just pop all those answers into the chat and just share with us what it was that you wanted to be when you were a little kid when you grew up. So share with that with me. And there are usually, okay, a teacher. Yep, that's usually, I remember I definitely held school in my, with my little chalkboard in my room as well. Um, nice, Josh Roach says he wanted to be a teacher. Nice, Billy and Josh, I see some connections there. Okay, Cindy's weighing in, astronaut, veterinarian. Veterinarian's a very popular one. That's where I got the dog walker thing from. Um, and a beach bum, yes. 
way to go. I live in Florida. So being a lifeguard, being a surfer dude, uh, that kind of thing was cool. Astronauts, definitely one of those things. So we all had that little dream when we were a little kid of what we wanted to be when we grew up. And for many of us, we had the costumes. We just came off of Halloween. So many of us dressed up like that image of that thing that we wanted to be as a little kid. And we acted it out. We held school. We climbed the trees. We saved the world. We taught all of our dolls and our stuffed animals. And I love it. Uh, I love it. Donald says, um, hard to say, not a solid gold dancer, but probably a veterinarian. Might have been a good choice. I get that. <laughs> I love that. But many of us, we acted it out. We played that role. We sat there, we dreamed and we visualized about what we would be when we grew up. And now all of a sudden, you're in the fire service and maybe you're the person that is in charge of recruitment for your department. Basically, folks, you're in sales and you didn't even know it. So by raise of your virtual hands, or if you can come on camera and raise your physical hand, or you can go down to the bottom, there's a little reaction button where you can raise your hand, or you can just put a yes in the chat. How many of you wanted to be in sales when you grew up? How many people wanted to be a salesperson? That's kind of what I thought. Next question. And <laughs> yeah, Billy, not me. How many of you knew that you did not want to be in sales? So pop it in the chat or give me that thumbs up with the virtual uh, response that you did not want to be in sales. I don't know many little kids that ever thought or dreamed that they wanted to be in sales. So yes, I'm seeing some come in the chat. Definitely no, no, no times eight. Cindy's got a, a, a whole slew of people there and they're all saying no way. Uh, thank you, Donald, definitely a not one to be in sales. But guess what? We have found ourselves in this fire service industry, but yet in a way we're in sales. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We are going to translate some questions. We're gonna reframe the way that we look at, at recruitment. We're gonna use some business principles to apply to that, to give you a new perspective on how you recruit for your people. So as always, I've got a handout. Heather's going to pop that in the chat if you didn't have a chance to print that. Of course, my handouts aren't super fancy. They're just a place to take notes. So if you don't have the handout printed, no harm, no foul. You could just grab a piece of paper to take notes. The handout is at janspence.com forward slash culture. And don't forget to put in all the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash janspence.com forward slash culture, because we're talking about building a culture of recruitment with your department. And again, you're welcome to, to print that out and uh, download that now. Or if you're listening online, if you were listening to this recording, that link will still be active. And as always, at the end of this session, I'm going to ask you to look for that one thing that you will do differently. The one thing that you will take action on. You're here tonight. You are spending your time dedicating your personal time when you could be feeding the kids, doing homework, cleaning up the yard, doing something, but you've dedicated this hour to learn something. So we wanna make that count. So we want you to, to learn, to have that takeaway and we'll share that feedback form link later in our, in our series. And of course, again, that link is active for anyone who watches this as a recording later. So to get into our content, we woke up one day and all of a sudden we we're responsible for growing the department, for recruiting people, making sure that the longevity is there, making sure that positions are filled and that the department the agency continues to thrive because they've got people that are willing to serve, whether that's in a volunteer role, which many of you obviously are, in a vol are recruiting volunteers, or if it's um, pulling in part-time people or even full-time people. It still is a challenge. So I want to ask you, what are the challenges? If you'll put that in the chat, and I welcome you are more than welcome to unmute and weigh in vocally if you prefer. Otherwise, put it in the chat and tell me what are the challenges that you find with recruiting new people to come to the fire service? What are some of the challenges that you face? So let's just share that out loud to make sure we're all on the same page because I've done my research and I have my ideas, but I want to hear from you what are the challenges that you face that you're experiencing? So I'll give it a moment, let you think about that and put that in the chat, or you can raise your hand 
with your virtual hand on the reactions button at the bottom and we can unmute, unmute you and let you uh, weigh in vocally. We welcome that. So uh, Cindy says, Peppel, I think that means people. If I'm sure, okay. People don't even want to work for money. <coughs> wow. Yes, people don't even want to work for money. So how much more, how much of a challenge is it to get them to work for as a volunteer? We're going to talk about that. Uh, Billy's got his hand up. Billy, weigh in, please. Getting people to buy in and, you know, realizing that they're not going to get paid for doing what we do, but getting them to buy into the program. There so buy in, but no money. They're not going to get paid. Yep. Okay. Donald's kind of e echoing that too. Low pay or no pay for volunteers. All right. And then, then some of the stuff we see, uh, I mean, it's uh, some people are just not, they, they find, they find it more, a lot harder to deal with than what we actually, and what they thought it was. And, and when you're talking about this, Billy, are you talking about someone who would be serving in the firefighter role that has to go through all of the rigorous training and the certifications? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Certainly. And and we'll, we'll, we're going to touch on that as well, because that can be a little bit overwhelming. Hey, come volunteer. Sure, I've got an hour a month. Oh, you're going to have to spend a lot more of that of your time, money, energy, and resources to even get to that level. So we'll talk about how we're going to flip that script on these folks to, to help them to buy in. Um, and Donald added to that as well. Um, both spouses working makes it hard for people to find time to volunteer for one of them. Yes, we've got many, many families where both um, parents are working. So that definitely is a challenge. Thank you. That's a good perspective. Any other perspectives out there other than no or low pay? Um, they're too busy because they've got family ties. So how can they get away from the family obligations and be able to weigh in? So anything else that we want to add to our list? I think there's probably a few others there, but I think y'all nailed it with some of the biggest challenges that we have. So I wanna ask you, what is the impact to your department? When we don't bring those people in, when we don't have them serve, when they say, oh, I just don't have the time for low pay or no pay, or um, it's just, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to make ends meet, especially with inflation. Um, how can I go and give my time when I really need to find things? Maybe I'll go drive for Uber or maybe I'll go uh, do a, a door dash and get a few extra hours just to bring in some cash. When you hear those kinds of things, what is the impact to your department? How is your apartment, department affected? How is your particular agency affected? So share that with me again in chat or feel free to unmute. And I'm gonna say if we don't get people to buy in, we uh, what happened to my screen here? We can hear you, Billy. Uh, if we don't get people to buy in, I mean, like us, we've been able to get some to buy in, but we need more because the more we have, you know, buy into the program, that means the better, yeah, the easier it makes on all of us because there's more of us to spread the workload around. So if there's only a few, then the workload increases on us. Exactly. So if you, just the, the classic situation that many, many organizations are in right now is they've got more work even with fewer people and fewer resources to do it. So that adds mm -hmm. stress. If you end up losing people, people go, I just can't do this anymore. Um they're overworked and tired. Am I am I on target there, Billy, with what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Dan, Any other? You know, you know it uh, it impacts us because it, it really endangers our communities. You know, if, if if we don't have the people, we can't respond. And these volunteer fire departments, you know, if we're not there, who's going to save lives and property? So it really impacts the whole community if we can't get enough people to safely respond. And it impacts the safety of our firefighters because if they don't have enough people there they can't you know they can't operate safely and take care of each other i totally and that's kind of where i was going based on what you said earlier not not only does it impact the community by being able to respond to the community and the people in the community 
but it affects that firefighter. When you're tired and you're worn out, um, it starts to impact your decision-making, your responses, um, just simply being tired. So, um, and I'm looking at here what Donald had, had added. He said, at the worst, the department can't effectively respond to emergencies, which is a little bit of what Chief Phillips echoed there. So that's at its very worst is that simply we can't, you can't respond. And that's kind of our worst case scenario. So we know it's an issue, we know it's a concern, we know what the impact is, so we've got to do something about it. So I'm just going to give you some ideas, and again, we've got an hour together, I'm going to give you just a few ideas, but if you take away one of these and start to implement it, and just turn the dial up a notch, and you get one, two, three, or more recruits, and get people in, and get them involved, even better. And I hope in the future, me or someone else will be able to take this conversation even further on how to implement that and retain those individuals with all the generational differences, which we've missed, we've mentioned a couple of times in our sessions before, and just really how to involve them. And if you have, if you weren't at the first session on really how to engage them and retain them and really help them feel connected, I encourage you to go back and watch that session so that you get some ideas on once you get them there, not only is getting there at one point, but you got to keep them there. So that's the second part. So in order to really build this sales related culture that I'm talking about, because we're basically selling the opportunity to people in order to do that and change that culture, what is culture? So culture is it's the practices, it's the norms, the ideals that separate one group from another. And so that culture is something that is built. It doesn't change over time. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen over an edict or an email. It is something that simply evolves over time to have that culture of recruitment. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight is how can you shift the tide just a little bit with some best practices to begin to have that culture of recruitment in your own agency. And we know that there's hope because it can change. You can start to make those small steps. And it really starts with the people that are here on this, on this call tonight. It's just how can you be a leader and how can you begin to exemplify that as you move forward? So we're going to look at three different areas. I'm going to give you three different keys on how to create that sales culture. But before that, I just want to do play a little game with you. So I'm going to need you to weigh in either vocally or by chat. And we're going to play that game password. So it was an old game. Uh, you'll have to go to Nickelodeon if you don't remember the password game. But it recently came back. Jimmy Fallon brought it back and it's on uh, TV now. But the password game basically was played like this. You had uh, your star celebrity and your celebrity would be the one that would have a screen. It was, it was an old like bubble back computer. It was kind of funny back in the day. And they would have these words. And the guest audience member who's trying to win the million dollars or whatever it was, they're trying to guess those words in a certain amount of time as fast as possible. So the celebrity has to give the most clear, distinct, visual, um, related, connected words so that the only word that pops into that guest audience member is the word that's on the screen. And once they get the word on the screen, they can go to the next word so they can attempt to win the money. So we're going to play that game. So I'll tell you what the word is. You're, I'm, the, I'm the guest, so you're trying to get me to guess the word. And the word that we're going to attempt to guess is Salesperson. I hope you can see that, but the word is salesperson. So you're trying to get me to guess salesperson. So when you think of the most clear, vivid, descriptive words, when you think of salesperson, what kind of words would you say that the only word that can pop in my head is salesperson? So pop that in the chat or unmute and shout it out. And I'll take, I'll make a, a quick laundry list of these words, these descriptive words about salespeople. Fire away. High pressure. Oh, nice. Yes, very much so. What are the words? I love it. Probably one of the 
probably one of the number one answers right there. Dishonest, liars, knowledgeable. Okay, Donna, if I heard knowledgeable, I might think educator. Um, what would make me think of salesperson right away, Donald? Think of the images. If you had to go Wikipedia salesperson, what would you think of? Oh, he nailed it. There we go. Used car. Yes. That would definitely make me think of a salesperson. Uh, Billy's weighing in with merchandise. Yep, they're definitely selling merchandise. Let me ask you this. What do they look like? What images come to mind when you think of a salesperson? They have a bright orange shirt. <laughs> professional. Some of them are, you know, are, more, are a whole lot more professional. Some are, but if you said professional, do you think that would make me think of a salesperson? <clears throat> what, no. what, what word would be, what else would they look like besides bright, a bright orange shirt? I love that, Eddie. You're just, you're just, you're going to well, play this whole Tennessee thing to, to, to the hilt here. I love it. What would they look like? Well-dressed? I don't know. Let me give you a little image there. What does that make you think of? <laughs> a used car salesman. Used car salesman. Can I use the term? I don't even know how to smell it. S smell it. Schmarmy, schmarmy, schmarmy there. So um, what about, you know, the gold pinky, the gold jewelry and the pinky ring? The high karate cologne. Don't you love the open, you know, the open jacket there? But what about the thumbs up? Like, I gotcha. So all of these words are very descriptive of a salesperson. And I, I love that classic look there. He's got, got the slick back hair. Uh, maybe you would even think of a briefcase as a briefcase toting, leisure suit wearing type of a, you know, their, their slickster. Oh, I like that when Jimmy persisted. They never give up. So almost like a pit bull on a bone. Yes, good answers, great answers. So when we think about a salesperson, this is what the typical person thinks of. They think that they're high pressure, they're dishonest, a used car salesperson, they're pushing merchandise, they're schmarmy or schwarmy, they've got that gold jewelry, they're persistent, they don't let go. And so that's what typical people think about salespeople. So when I mentioned to you that I want you to view recruiting as sales, some people go, ah, kind of, kind of makes your stomach sick. And you're thinking, Jan, the last thing I ever thought of being when I was a little kid was being a salesperson. I don't want to be associated with that. But I want to challenge you that what we are in the business of doing is we're in the business of selling the story. We're in the business of selling the opportunity. We are in the business of selling a dream and a vision to the people out there who can be a part. They just don't know because we haven't shared it yet. So the first thing that we need to do, and if you've printed the handout, there's a very simple one, two, three. And if you're taking notes, just a one, two, three. The first thing that we need to do is we need to reframe. We need to reframe the way that we look at, at recruiting. And think of it as, how can we think of this as sales? Sales in a good way, not sales in a swarmy, swarmy way, but sales in a good way, that we are offering an opportunity. So for many of us, we think about that sales and, and we think, oh my goodness, it's just, that's awful. We can't push this on people if they don't want to join, if they don't think so, if they don't show up, well, then I just shouldn't bother them. I should never pressure them. I should just let them be. But I wanna challenge you to reframe your thinking, to really reframe the way that you view recruiting as it's really sales. It's really bringing people, what is sales? Sales is inviting someone to buy, experience, purchase, be a part of something that's going to make their life better. So when we reframe our mindset, we begin to have a different perspective. And so you as leaders have the opportunity to reframe your mindset. You can reframe the way that you talk to your team. 
You can reframe the way that you talk about it in the department. And it doesn't need to be, we need more recruits, but it needs to be, we just need to start asking and inviting people into the opportunity to serve the community. Listen, we, we don't have a session on generations for this series, but when we look at generations, millennials and your Gen Zs are who are coming behind them and even more so the Gen Alphas will be behind them that will soon be in that, that opportunity to be in that workforce. Those folks are driven by purpose. They want to be part of something that makes a difference. They want to know that what they do has value in the community and in the world. What a better time to sell volunteering and being a part of the fire service because this particular generation is not necessarily about the paycheck. Do they need to pay? Sure, they need to live. They need to pay their bills. But even more importantly, they will commit to a group where they feel like they are making a difference. So we, reframing the way that we think about this is critical. We have to see it as an act of service that we're asking people, we're inviting them into an opportunity to become a part of something that makes a difference in the community. We have to, to change our ver verbiage from um, maybe even recruitment to we need to recruit more people to we need to offer the opportunity to more people. Maybe we say things like, would you be willing to come and help the community versus would you be willing to volunteer? Maybe it's even something like, we are looking for people to help provide solutions for those in need. Would you consider being a part of that and using your skills for that? So reframing the way that we think about recruitment and using our verbiage to make a difference can make a huge impact. And it starts with you as the leader. If you're the chief, if you are in a position of leadership, if you are titled with that, or if that's one of your many responsibilities is recruitment, then begin to rephrase and reframe the way that you are actually viewing what you're doing and how you are positioning that because behavior is contagious. We talked about that in our first leadership series. We talked about behavior being contagious and the fact that it's so critical that what you say and how you frame this will transfer through the whole department. So it starts with you and that's a challenge. And some, for some of you, that might be your takeaway tonight is that you reframe the way that you talk about recruitment with your people and with your team, because you've got to be the example. You've got to be committed and you've got to lead by that example because there's that ripple effect. I love what Steve Jobs, he said, he said, we don't create what uh, customers want. We make the product that creates the want in customers. So you already have the product, but how can you create the want and people to want to be a part of that? And a lot of that is by telling your story, by offering the opportunity, by sharing the experience. And I'm going to give you some how to's in our next couple of sessions and our next two points. So the first thing is to reframe, really reframe your thinking that it's not sales, it's not recruiting, it's not like how do we wrestle them and you know headlock them and drag them into the, into the service into the station and you know lock them down as recruits and convince them to spend the money to become a firefighter it's how can we offer them an opportunity that they can make a difference and feel fulfilled and make a difference in our world and in your community so that's the first thing second thing if you have that handout and heather you're welcome to pop that in the chat one more time i know we had a couple of folks um hop on if not, grab a piece of paper. So don't worry about downloading it now. Just grab a piece of paper. If you've got a marker nearby or a Sharpie, that's great. Um, if it's eight and a half by 11, even better, because I'm going to ask you to hold this up to the calendar. This is the audience participation part. So I would love it if you were able to come off camera when we share this. But for the next 20 seconds, I just want you to very simply just draw a quick sketch of a coffee cup and a saucer. So just real quick, 20, 20 seconds, just draw a coffee cup and a saucer. Get my timer going here. <clears throat> Great. 
real quick, 20 seconds, coffee cup and a saucer. So if you'll, if you can come on screen, even like Cindy, if you're with a group of people, if you want to grab a couple, uh, Chief, I see you've got your paper ready. Heather's got her paper ready. So let's show it, um, hold it up. Heather's got a virtual background. So might have to find the exact right spot. Okay, Chief, there we go. Okay, little lopsided saucer there. I think it looks more like a toilet. It kind of does. So um, Donald, again, virtual screen. So it's a little bit hard to see. <laughs> Heather, yours is looking like a window. Yep, I see Donald there. Okay, let me see here, Shakir. Okay, Shakir, very nice. Coffee cup and saucer's got a little steam coming out. Timothy, very nice. Timothy, okay, yep, there we go. As I say, Timothy and Donald switch places there. Um, nice, so good. Billy's coming back in here. He was already in there, now he's in here twice. We welcome that. Anybody else, L Sharp, Jimmy, Chief Piercy, if y'all wanna share, we'd love to see what your cup and saucer looks like. Do I have any others? Bueller, Bueller. Okay. By and large, the ones that I saw all look something like this. Just kind of a round saucer, coffee cup. Again, Shakir had a little steam coming out of his. So, okay, Jimmy's got the whole department there. You want to bring, show some close up? I love it. Bring it on up there. She says, that's not good enough. I'm gonna show these. Okay, loving it. Yep, there we go. Similar cup, cup of coffee. And y'all know you can always put your view. Um, you can always pin someone if you wanted to see it. She, she's trying to grab his and he's like, no, I don't want to show mine. I love it. <laughs> but most everyone's look like this. And that is typical. This is very, very common. So your responses are very normal. But what I find interesting is that no one drew it like this. And this is the top down view of a coffee cup and a saucer. So my point is this, somewhere along the way, you learned, you got programmed into your brain that a coffee cup and saucer looks like this. But none of us think about it looking like this. So the message here is that we have to change our perspective. We have to change our perspective. So our second tip to creating that sales culture of recruitment in your department is to reword, reword how you're phrasing things, how you're saying things. Look at things from a different perspective. Let's face it, we've got lifers in the fire department and we've always done it the way we've always done it. And we have had a pancake breakfast every year regardless and we're not gonna stop. And we don't stop to think that maybe this is the pancake breakfast, but maybe we need to look at something different. We need to look at things from a different perspective. And so as you think about this and you think about your department and what you've done regarding your recruitment tactics, if you will, I share with you an experience that I had in an airport recently. And I was going, I went over, went to buy something to drink from the, the little kiosk. And as I was, as I was getting ready to pay, the nice clerk, she says, would you like a bottle of water to go with this? And I thought, oh, this bottle of water is going to cost me $8, you know, 17 times what it costs them to produce. And I'm probably going to get a cup of water on the plane. And I could probably go get it cheaper from the vending machine. But then I thought, but then I'm going to have to put down my laptop bag, my luggage, my purse. I'm going to have to get the money out. I'm going to have to fool with the machine. So it probably makes more sense for me to get it there. What I didn't realize is that many of us have that bottle of water. We have that offering that we can offer to people if we just change our perspective. But right now we're in the midst of, well, let's just sell them a cold drink. That's what they came for. Let's just give them what they asked for. But when we change our perspective, we can begin to offer things and reword the way that we offer things that will begin to be more inclusive with what people can be drawn to. So I'm going to give you a couple of questions, three questions 
that you can begin to add to your vernacular that will help you to start recruiting. And these things can be used verbally. And again, leaders, I'm asking you to be contagious, your behaviors be, to be contagious. So you've got to lead by example. And again, in part three, I'll give you some ways to get everyone involved and help remind them to use these techniques. So that first question is ask the, did you know question? Did you know? So the, did you know question, it gets the, them interested in something that maybe they didn't know. Because let's face it, the average public may think that being a volunteer for the fire department means you have to be a firefighter. And let's face it, I don't think I'm prepared to lug, I don't know how many pounds it is, up 13 flights of stairs or whatever it may take and all of the rig rigorous physical activities. But what about the maintenance on the vehicles? What if you've got someone that's really, really, what if it's your neighbor that's always out there tinkering with cars and they're always the person that everyone goes to and says, hey man, I got a little funny little sound in my car. Can you come take a look? Have you ever thought of saying, did you know that our fire department actually uses volunteers to help us maintain our fire service vehicles? Would you be open to discussing the possibility of being able to offer your time and talents to be able to help the community? That's something that they may never have even thought of. So there are opportunities out there that people don't even know because we're not asking that, did you know that we can also use this? Did you know that not only is our fire department have full-time paid firefighters and volunteers, uh, firefighters, but we also use volunteers in multitude of roles. So just by starting to ask that question and modeling that for the people around you can begin to engage people that you that have never even thought of volunteering before. So ask the did you know question. It's also a great one to put on email. At the bottom of an email signature, you can put did you know that we use these types of individuals to help volunteer and maybe there's a link that will click back to your website that can give a list of volunteer opportunities that gets people interested just by simply asking. So we reword what we say. The second little questioning technique is, I don't suppose. I don't suppose. So with this technique, you can actually mention things like, I don't suppose you'd be open to coming to an exploration night at our local fire service just to find out what opportunities are out there. Let's face it, many of you are in the community. Um, maybe you're standing in the line at the grocery store, maybe you have some gear on, or, or as Chief uh, Phillips is proudly representing his fire chief service in his bright orange tonight. But maybe he's being seen at standing in line, buying his cookies and cream ice cream, you know, for the nightly, <laughs> he's nodding his head, <laughs> cookies and cream ice cream for, uh, for the nightly snack. And someone goes, oh, you're with the fire service. We appreciate your service. Thank you for being a part. Maybe there's a comment like that that happens just on a casual level. You just ask, I don't suppose you'd be interested in finding out about some of the volunteer opportunities that we have so that you could also be a part of serving our community. Remember, people want to give something of value, they're more willing to give their time, their talent, and their resources for something that means something to them. But if they don't know and we don't ask, how can they volunteer? How can they be a part? So I don't suppose you'd be willing to do this. I don't suppose you'd come and help us flip pancakes at the pancake breakfast and help us uh, bring the community together to raise money for XYZ. So using that I don't suppose type of a smooth technique, it's not swarmy, it's not dishonest, it's not uh, uh, lying, it's not high pressure, it's just saying I don't suppose you knew that this was available. And it invites them into that opportunity. And then the third one is kind of unique, but it's one of my favorites. And I call that the, do you want fries with that question? Do you want fries with that? So some of you who may not remember, but many, many moons ago, McDonald's started adding that question. When people would come in to order, the, order their uh, Big Mac, they trained their frontline cashiers and their drive through personnel to say, would you like fries with that? And their fry sales went up exponentially. And they said, well, if that worked, let's try apple pies. 
So they started, if people ordered fries and then they became with combo meal came very soon after that, before that wasn't a thing. And so they started saying, would you like to add an apple pie to that? And their apple pie sales grew exponentially just by asking a simple question and offering the opportunity. So I want you to reframe your thinking, reword how you're asking, and you can ask those, do you want fries with that type of question? And in your world, it might sound like, um, you know, not only do firefighters and EMTs provide service, but we also need people who have budgeting skills, who have some accounting or bookkeeping background. Did you know that we also need people just to handle administration and help us to handle administrative tasks? So if you have a few hours that you might be willing to use your organizational skills, we invite that. So it's kind of the, fry, the add on, the fries with that. Not everyone has to climb the tower and climb the stairs and be in the midst of the action. There are also other opportunities that people can come in to serve and to encourage. Education is another one. Did you know that we use people to come in and once they've learned the content in the environment, we can use them for education. We can use them to go out to talk to school students and STEM students to encourage them to be uh, consider this as a career. So do you want fries with that? A little something extra that you can offer when you're presenting the opportunity. People go, oh, no, no, firefighting's not for me. Well, did you also know that we could use this? It's just a simple ask, it's not high pressure, but invites someone into the opportunity. So I wanna stop, pause for just a moment and ask you, what are some of the, the questions that you have asked? I love when we can learn from each other, it's called social learning rather than me just telling you what I know, I learn from you too. So if you've got ideas and feel free to unmute or pop it in the chat, what are some questions that you asked to invite people into the opportunity, that give them the idea that not everything is um, like we see in Hollywood on, on, on TV and in movies, but other opportunities that people have, that they can come, that they can feel fulfilled, that they can realize that they're making a difference serving the community. So share with me, if there's one or two uh, questions that we can share with the group, put, put that in the chat or raise your hand or unmute and we'll get you um, unmuted here so you can share with the group. And while you're thinking on that, because I know some of you are in groups, um, just want to share that I've got a bonus handout. Um, it is geared toward organizations that are associations that are drive that are using these same techniques to drive revenue to invite members to be more engaged in associations. So many of the principles apply. So when you go to the feedback form at the end of this, if you'll just put in the notes that you would like that bonus handout, we'll send you that PDF. Heather will take care of that and she'll send you those extra little tips and you'll get a couple of extra ideas as well. So not seeing any additional questions come in, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going with our content with the time that we have left. So your first one is to reframe, reframe your thinking. Remember that your behavior is contagious and you've got to lead the charge with how you talk about recruitment and really reframing it as inviting people into the opportunity to serve, not just wrestling them and tackling them and selling them into, uh, forcing them into an opportunity. The second thing is to reword. Let's change our verbiage to invite people into that opportunity, invite them into the opportunity to serve and let them know that there are other ways to serve in addition to being a firefighter. And then the third thing is to rework, rework. And rework is really the process. How can we drive this? How can we implement this into the department? How can we help this trickle down effect that you as the leader can start as that recruitment officer or as the chief or as one of the leaders at your agency? So the rework has to be the process and it really has to be intentional. You have to be intentional about this. It's got to be something that you put into place. It's gonna take a little bit of planning. This, this will uh, might not be one of those things that you just do overnight or start tomorrow but it might take a little planning, but it's something that you can put into process. So there's two, P, two uh, P's, two P's to this reworking process, and that's people and procedures, the people and procedures. So for people, people are your biggest asset. 
we know that people volunteer because they were asked and they were invited or they knew someone. And I heard that earlier um, that they often, you know, someone in the family was in the service. And so that's how they got interested. They were familiar with it, or maybe someone that they knew that they lived around or that they communicated with. So we know that that's a part of that. It's just someone that they actually know. But we know that organizations don't grow by accident. They just simply don't grow by accident. It has to be intentional. So with people, do you have people that are willing to ask the question? Are they trained properly? Are you, this is a dirty word, but role playing? <laughs> I like to call it skill practice. But do you have opportunities at meetings just to give your team, and maybe this is a takeaway for you, to give your team the chance to practice when they are going through that drive through. Um, I know one of my clients is firehouse subs and they obviously love their firefighters. And um, it's, it's a local chain here based in Jacksonville, Florida, and they always take care of their firefighters. And so they're often in there and people are always praising them, coming up to them, just saying, thank you. Those are all opportunities if your people are trained well to invite people into the opportunity. So are they being trained? Are you giving them the verbiage? Are they practicing that so that when someone says that, they can say, I don't suppose you've ever thought of this. And they can say, oh, no way, I'm not fit enough. Well, did you know that there's also other opportunities to be able to serve? There are other ways that you can give back to the community. So training is a big part of it. And then getting their buy-in. What's in it for the people that are already in your agency? We have already talked about the fact that they're overworked, if they're tired, if they can't focus effectively, it can negative Im negatively impact them and also the community and being able to respond if we don't have enough people to carry the load. So there's definitely a what's in it for them. We just have to give them the tools to be able to ask and invite people into the opportunity. So the first thing is the people, focusing on the people, giving them the tools to be able to ask and you being that leader and being the contagious leader to give them those tools. And then the second thing is procedures. And I've got a lot of little um, tips and tricks here. So with procedures, just like a business, we need to be tracking it and measuring it. So do you have a tracking system? Do you have a way? Do you have a spreadsheet? Do you have a, a CRM, a customer relationship management program? Do you have a poster on the wall, a shoebox filled with handwritten volunteer uh, signups? It doesn't matter. But are you tracking the people who show interest and are you following up with them with a consistent process? So we need to have that procedure in place to track who you're attracting, how you're getting them, and then what you're doing for that follow up. It used to be in advertising that people had to hear a message seven times before they would take action. With the internet, social media, phones, text, everything that we are getting, we are getting so many messages from so many places, that number is now more like 21. 21 times that someone needs to hear that message before they say, I'm gonna check out this opportunity. So it can't just be one phone call or one poster or one email. It needs to be a multitude of different ways to connect with people to actually attract them to you and finding out what's important to them to offer them and invite them into the opportunity. So are you tracking, uh, tracking where your recruits are coming from? So pop into the chat real quick and share with me where are most of your recruits coming from? So I know y'all got the answer to this one. So I'm expecting it. I'm expecting a um, an all call on this one to be able to share where are you getting most of your recruits right now? Where are they coming from? Word of mouth, 100% Timothy Buchanan, yes. High school is another one for high school and college, another one for college, fantastic. You're hitting that generation that wants to get back, that wants meaningful work, that wants something that's going to make an impact on the community. I love those. Does anyone hold recruitment events? Are you finding that that is effective? The good old pancake breakfast or some version of that. 
You know, Anybody Jan, a number, of the, yeah. a number of the departments on here are participating in our SAFER grant, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're doing the things that you're saying. They're, they're putting procedures into place. They're planning out. They're trying to create that culture of recruitment, as you're saying, because they're doing events that they already have to do. They have to go to the city parades and stand by. They have to go to the football games and stand by. So they're adding recruitment to that. And, uh, and so it, that's what's really paying off. So what you're saying is some of the people on this call could testify that they are, you know, they have implemented some of those procedures and they really are working. Beautiful. And thank you for sharing that. So we're tracking on the same page. It, it's taking those opportunities like being at the football games, being in the community, being in, at the parades. Billy's saying anytime we're out in, in the public, we have recruiting materials with us. That is fantastic. Um, you know, handing out a brochure or giving someone a business card with, hey, you know, check this out is great. But what's the follow up with that? So I would add to that as part of your procedures um, to find, you know, to say, hey, can I have your name and your email? And I'll make sure that I notify you of the next event. So really tracking that from, again, that sales perspective. So we don't just let a lead, uh, we call it a lead in sales, someone who might be interested in what we have to offer. We don't want to just let it sit there and wait. We definitely want to have some way to track that and to follow up with them, especially when we're thinking about the fact that people need to see it many, many times before they respond. Um, Timothy's is adding, we also add it to our website letter. I'm sorry, our solution letter and our website. Nice. Fantastic. Great, great stuff. Um, I'll go ahead and throw this out. And this is part of my promotion, but I'll go ahead and throw this out now. Um, using video. It used to be people would read email text and then we got email with pictures. Now it's email with videos. People will respond and watch statistically. We'll watch a video faster and get their information there. Everybody's different because some people like to read, some people don't like to watch video, but by and large, the majority of the population, especially the younger generations that you're trying to recruit, respond to video. So short testimonial videos, um, maybe it's video day at the, um, at the department and you video testimonials of your lifers, your people that are paid, or maybe you video volunteers that are in all different roles and you video them and have them share why they're doing it, the what's in it for them, why they're doing that. That can reach out and touch someone's wow. I can serve too. And it hits their own personal need to serve and to give back to the community. And they see that opportunity where they can serve. So I'll throw that in. Video is a huge, powerful tool that a lot of people still don't use. So a couple of uh, quick other ones. Um, checklists. You know, do you have a checklist? Is everyone connecting? Are you re uh, really requiring your people to follow the procedure of connecting with five people per week? Um, again, I don't know what all is in the Safer Grant program that, that you're going through with recruitment, but it sounds like it's spot on with, with asking and putting the plan in place. But tracking that, are there checklists? Are there visual reminders? Is there a visual by the phone that every time someone answers the phone and answers a simple phone call, that someone's asking a did you know question, where it's did you know that we have opportunities for in, in lots of different roles, and just offering the opportunity, inviting people in, and if they show some interest, just get the name and email, and then they're at least getting the email blasts, or um, they're getting connected with your social media, so that they are beginning to get that message on multiple levels to begin to invite them into the opportunity. And then special promotions. Um, this you can have a lot of fun with your people. So maybe it is um, it's supermarket month or supermarket week. And it is everybody, every time you go into the supermarket, find someone. If you make a connection, you ask them that did you know question. Or I don't suppose you'd ever consider volunteering uh, for our community. Well, what do you mean volunteering for our community? We've got lots of opportunities and you just sh share and invite. It's not swarmy. It's not dishonest. It's not high pressure. You're just simply asking. And uh, we could spend all night talking about the testimonials of people who volunteered and they would not have volunteered, but they did because they were asked. So if we don't ask, we're not going to get them. 
So using social media effectively, visual triggers, you know, things there in the station, things by the phone, things by the time clock, just things to remind promotions, having fun with it, maybe even contests. I love contests to see who can bring the most people to the recruitment meeting um, and just have a fun giveaway, but doing things like that really to make it front of mind for the people on the street. So it was, um, uh, not Billy, but it was, yeah, it was Timothy who said word of mouth. If we don't ask, people don't know. So if we don't ask, people don't know. So we have to invite them into that opportunity. So making that front of mind. So to recap, we really have to reframe our mindset. And you as the leader, you've got to be that one to be contagious. And you've got to exemplify that and be that ripple effect. And then we, we, we reword, we just change the way that we think about this. And yes, it is sales, but it's not in a swarmy way, a slick, slimy way. It's inviting people into the opportunity and giving them the verbiage and giving them the conversation points to have those conversations. And then the third thing is really the rework, the people in the processes to put things in place so that it's front of mind and they're continually asking and inviting people into the opportunity so that you can begin to bring more, get more, get more responses to bring people into the agency. So I'll pause there, Heather, if you'll put the feedback form in the chat. Um, so as always, I want to know what's your biggest takeaway that helps me, um, helps Chief and Shakir know how to gear our content for the future. So it takes just a few seconds just to plug your name in there and share that. You can do it after the meeting if you like. Um, we've got three minutes left, but if you would, and it's got to be all lowercase, by the way, and make sure you can click on the link right there in the um, right there in the chat, or you can actually just type that in. And again, remember, it's got to be all lowercase, but it'll be a feedback form, name and email address. I've got a weekly video tip you can sign up for. Love to connect with you on social media. Got lots of firefighters who follow me. Um, so those are a couple of things and any comments. And remember, if you want that bonus handout, just put bonus and Heather will make sure that she emails that to you so that you'll get that. And I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but our winner of the prize, we're going to draw for a prize from those that fill that out, was Mr. This is my gift to myself as I get older. I now need glasses. Um, Steve Homrich with Will Williamson County, Tennessee, I believe it was. Williamson County was our winner last time. So we'll have a winner and you'll receive a copy of my book, which is Cheer on Your Team, 52 Tips to Increase Employee Retention, Engagement, and Loyalty, which fits right into our topic. So um this is a shameless plug, but if you wanted to order one for someone in your department, you can go to my website, use the code CHEER, all capitals, C-H-E-E-R. You'll get five bucks off and we'll be happy to send that to you. Great um, holiday gift or a thank you for someone. So um, before I pass it back to Chief for some closing comments, just want to remind you to reframe. You're the leader. Your behavior is contagious reword how you position this, give the words to the people that need to go out there and be asking, did you know, I don't suppose, do you want fries with that? Meaning there are other ways to serve and then to rework, getting your people and your processes in place to track, to measure, to have a plan, to recruit, to bring people in and consistently making that part of your everyday activity and looking at things differently from what you've done before. So, um, well, let me pass it to you, Chief, and then I'll do one, one quick uh, close. With I'll let you make some comments, and then we'll wrap up. We're right at 8 o'clock, so. Okay, Jan, thank you very much, and I, this is so good. Thank you so much. You know, guys, we have learned that we need to have a culture of recruitment in our departments, and, and that's what we need to be doing, always selling our departments and what we do, and and uh, being contagious, as Jan said. And I love that, Jan, uh, offering opportunities. Instead of just trying to recruit people, we're offering them opportunities to, to serve and protect and to do what we do and, and to get into this family of the fire service. So that is so neat. And I, what you said in the first lesson uh, three or four weeks ago, you know, was so important for all the leaders on this call and all the leaders that'll be watching this in the future. Um, you know, if you're going to be a leader in your department, you've got to be a cheerleader of that department and you've got to be contagious. You've got to make people want to join 
want to be part of something important. You know, we all know that we really do save lives and we really do save property and we want people to be part of that. Talk about um, being part of something that can really make a difference. As you said, that's what people nowadays want to be. So, you know, let's build that culture of always recruiting and always selling our departments and always thinking about a number of you have done a great job of that. We have really learned through this process that if we'll just add recruitment, if we'll just add recruitment to all the things we're already having to do, we already have to do these activities, add that recruitment element to it. And people, when they find out, as Jan said, people don't know if you don't ask. When they find out that the opportunity really is there, people will come in. And there's a number of people on this call that could testify to that. So thank you, Jan, so much. Uh, remember, folks, that this these three video series will be on our Volunteer Fire TN website later once we get them all together. So you'll be able to, uh, uh, at your leisure, you or any member of your department or anybody in the Tennessee Fire Service will be able to go on there and watch these training videos. So thank you so much, Jan. And thank you guys again for being here. It shows, as I said earlier, it shows your commitment to your department and your commitment to the fire service to be here. Uh, Shakir, did you have anything? No, nothing, Chief. Uh, thank you, Jen, again. And thank you all for joining us tonight uh, for this uh, event. Thank you. Uh, one thing I will say, Cindy and anybody else that I know might have more than multiple people, let me know uh, how many you have. Send me an email. Cindy's good to do that. And I know some of the others already have. So uh, uh, that's all, Jan. Over to you. Sure. So I'll wrap up with this um, very quickly. I went to Uganda on a mission trip a few years ago, and um, we had matches with us as one of our necessities that we needed out in a place that didn't have um, our daily comforts that we have in the U.S. And um, so some of the locals found the matches. And so they started using these as mu musical instruments. So we walked up on them and they were shaking them. And they were tapping them and they were rubbing on them. And they were making music with these matchbooks and they didn't know what it was. They just hadn't seen it before. And so as we walked up and they were making this beautiful music, we showed them that actually it was a matchbook. And so what they didn't know is that the fire was within. And so I wanna share and pardon the fire reference, but I think it's so applicable to this group but the fire is within these people. They just don't know that they wanna be a part of what you have to offer until you ask. So know that there are people out there that you're not pushing this on. You're not forcing them to do something that they don't wanna do. There are people that are out there that are looking for meaningful work in their lives, even if it's unpaid. You just have to ask and invite them in to find the own fire within them to be able to serve your community. And with that, I encourage you to go and create a sales culture and a recruitment culture in your department. And I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. That was excellent. And thank you, everybody, for being here and the folks that will be watching us in the future. Thank you so much for what you do. Keep on keeping on and keep on asking people and giving people that opportunity to serve. So thank you so much. Have a great.